Developers, welcome to our conversation about scope, uh, specifically variable scope. Uh, scope. Variables have scope. Variables uh, have a particular uh, lifetime in which they are available. Uh, variables will be initialized, declared and initialized, and they will live in memory for a specific period of time. And not only that, they will have, we will have access to that memory depending upon where we are in the code. So we're going to have this discussion in the context of functions because functions provide for us uh, a really good environment for us to discuss the scope uh, because scope is very much uh, available to us and changes as we uh, go into the different code blocks. So the functions that you are familiar with writing and seeing, you've heard us talk about them a lot. They have these open and closed curly brackets that give us a code block. So it's just a really nice um, and convenient way uh, for us to discuss scope. But this is also applicable uh, when we start talking about uh, the code blocks in an if statement, the code blocks in a uh, while loop, a dual while loop. Anytime you have these code blocks declared uh, and written, this gives us an opportunity to potentially declare variables uh, in a different scope and that will live and die for different times of uh, different periods of time. So here we are, we're going to talk about um, first the global scope. Okay, so the global scope is essentially this general area that we sit out here uh, globally, right? So there's really no space to it. There's no code blocks around it. It is just what's out here. The next um, level, uh, block level uh, scope that I want to uh, outline here is this first level function. So here's this first level function. And that is essentially the boundaries uh, for that first level function. The next uh, function uh, uh, and the next function defines our next level of scope. And it's this one, the child level. So you see, I have already uh, provided some uh, comments here, right? Look, I have some comments here that describe for us the access, uh, uh, the access to the particular variables that we might have. So let's talk about this a little bit. I am global because it's global. Everybody actually has access to it. All right. So that's a little easier to understand. Everybody's just got access to it. All right. Now, let's talk about this first level function and the variables uh, that are defined inside of the first level function. Inside of the first level function, any code in this space, okay, is going to have access, uh, specifically this variable. If I had any instructions in this area, it would have access to this variable. And uh, let me draw a little escape hatch here. And it would have access to read global variables. The global variable, though, it cannot get through and it cannot see anything inside of this function. It can see the function itself, but it cannot go inside of it and detect, for example, that there is a variable called first level because the code block protects it. Uh, and in fact, until that function fires, there is no such thing as a variable uh, called first level. So the global cannot see in. From uh, from within, though, right, from within this first level function uh, that I have uh, blocked off here as red. Let me get a thicker marker here that I have blocked off as red. When I am inside here, I do have access to reach out and access global. OK, so the first level guy, he has access to reach out and access global. That's great. So it has access to this dude. It has access to the global stuff. That's fantastic. Now, because the child level function, even though it provides a code block to it, it is defined at our level. It, it's defined in the first level. So within the first level function, we can see uh, this function. We can see it, but we can't now. We cannot go inside of it. We do not have access to anything that's defined inside of it. All right. But very much the case as it was with uh, the first level having access to the global. This child actually has access to read first level stuff. And it actually has access to go inside or actually go through back up to the parent. So the children 
are going to have access to the parent level scopes all the way up to the global. That's a good rule of thumb. Now, let me back up a little bit and ha give you this warning about scope. What I've just described might not be uh, that hard of a concept to wrap your head around. Okay, might not be. But scope is a really big deal in software development. Scope is a huge, huge deal in software development, specifically in, 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 in wow, in, in JavaScript, uh, it really comes into play a lot and mastering it is really important. Uh, you're not going to master it for a while. Okay. And even now the stuff that I've discussed here with you uh, doesn't necessarily uh, sound that complicated. Everyone has access to global. Uh, a given anything defined in this function is going to have access to stuff in global and at its level, but not in. So this guy's got access to here and everything up through the parent scopes. Again, not that uh, hard of a concept to kind of understand here. I'm going to show you some code that's running in a little bit so you can see that in action and what that feels like. But it's going to take time for you to be able to apply it intel intelligently and for you to write elegant code that leverages this behavior because this behavior really gives rise to a lot of cool stuff that we do uh, to build out some complicated things in what would seemingly seem, uh, you know, again, it's just really cool, uh, complicated uh, software that we can build leveraging and understanding how scope works. Getting to that point where you can understand it a little bit better and implement aspects of this uh, to provide for elegant software solutions uh, is going to take some time. So that's why I don't like to talk about it too much here. I could talk about this for hours and hours and hours. Uh, how we can leverage scope and the lifetime availability of variables in many different ways. For right now, let's go in over and and uh, see this code actually uh, run inside of our browser. Uh, I've brought over, look, I have this, I am global, I have first level and I have child function, right? So I am global, uh, I have the first level function. Let me first uh, comment out the calls. And I am going to show you what this looks like in our browser for us to start um, so as to poke at this so we can understand a little bit about how the scope behaves okay so when this renders I'm essentially just gonna render with one two uh, three three items right the I am global which is string I have this global data object and, and then I have this function right so this functions um, you know it's just a function notice that we don't see any of the variables anything going on inside of this function we don't even see that this the child function so here's a function within a function we don't even see that because then again that's not available to us globally so that's also then again this is a nice visualization of it I don't have access to those variables inside from the global area right now this object graph is has always been a picture of what's available to us globally now what have I done here with uh, these three properties. Let's look at the type of operator, a good friend, the type of operator. The type of operator is going to give us the type of this particular uh, variable, right? And so I have chosen these three variables because these are three variables that I wanna look at. I am global is global. So we can see here that this variable global data, when it was initialized to have a property of I am global, it found that I am global, the type of I am global is a string. And then when I conducted the same type of operator operation on the other two variables, right, the first level variable here, and in the child, I have a child level variable here, we see that those can come, come in as undefined. Again, this representation of these properties here is essentially what we see in the global namespace. So that's not necessarily a, a, a surprise. Okay, so then what we're going to do next is that I'm going to declare these objects, right? So look, I'm just declaring these global objects because, again, the, even the most innermost scope and the most innermost object is going to have access to the global space. And I wanted to create these two objects as little buckets. I'm going to end up filling these two objects, this one and this one. And I'm going to fill them up like I filled out this global data, but I'm going to do so, for example, at different levels. 
So if we look at um, this first level function, here's where I am going to initialize or reinitialize the first level data. I'm going to initialize that to have an object. Actually, it's reinitialized because I already initialized it to something. So if I want to just say initialize, because I'm going to keep making that mistake, I'm going to do this. Granted, these are initialized to null. If I really don't want any initialization, and this is just declaration, I've declared two properties, two variables, first level data and child level data, and boom, they're undefined. But when I go and execute this function, what it's going to do, it's that it's going to initialize first level data and run the same type of type of operations, right? It's going to define these three properties and it's going to inspect, hey, what's the type of I am global? What's the type of first level? And then listen, what's the type of child level? It's going to have, it's going to do that same thing, but now it's going to do that one block level, one code block level in. And what we see here is that it is still able to see this variable. Here's the global variable. I am global. Uh, and it is now able to see the first level one because it's a string, right? Here's a string. And it still cannot see the child level one because the child level one, the child level variable is buried inside of the child level function. That's essentially what it can see. <clears throat> now, again, I'm just doing it off of strings. If we wanted to, this could be anything, right? So I'm going to make this one an object so we can see that the type of the first level is going to be recognized as an object. So there's the object. Now, I have not yet executed the child function. Once I do execute the child function, I have this child level data that I'm going to populate. I'm going to populate the child level data, and I'm actually going to give it a number. The child level uh, variable, I'm populating child level data with the same three uh, operations of simply let me read right now what the JavaScript engine <clears throat> thinks the type of these three variables are. And I'm going to assign them to these three variables, or rather these three properties. And we will now see that here we go. Globally, the only one that's available is I am global. At the first level, right, we see that the, the, the first two are available because I've only exposed this first level function, and then I have this child function. But again, the child function and the child level variable are not available at this, at this point. And now finally within the child function, once I execute it, I run this code and I populate the data for child level data. And you will see that now the child level data actually has access to all of the variables that are defined here at this level, at the child level this guy it has access to this area right uh, because I, I I can see that first level is an object and then all the way up to the global so if you've made a mistake so I've done this type of now why is that important and uh, let me just show you an error here uh, I'll show you the errors in case it needs to be shown to you at the global level, uh, I can I only have access to I am global, right? So if I said I am global that length, that's fantastic. It's got a length. But then there's this thing first level. It's actually called first level, right? Ooh, first level uh, is is oh first first level. Let me get this one more back one more time. It's not defined. It's not there. So I can't do anything with it. I can't uh, set a property to it at all. All right. I cannot access it. It's not available for me. And the same thing would be, in fact, look, now I, I can't execute the first level function because uh, first level function because I do have access to it. The first level function is defined uh, globally. There it is. But I cannot access the child. Uh, actually, it's just called, called child function. So the child function, uh, I cannot access at all, right? Boom, it's not there. If I look at it like that, it's not there. This is uh, a summary, uh, an overview of the availability of variables and how they change with scope and how uh, child scopes and parent scopes 
uh, give or restrict access to the variables that are defined within within them. As I just said a moment ago, leveraging this information takes time. I don't care who you are. I don't care what's what's going on. It takes time for you to be able to actually implement this. And it's best that you focus on learning how to write more code. Uh, and as these situations come up, especially if you continue with the rest of the courses, we will point out the opportunities for you to leverage uh, scope and how to you know really uh, work with it uh, in a, a really solid, masterful way that could you can leverage in your career.